What's up, everyone? This is Other Destroyer 229, and welcome to the aftermath of the Battle of Lumbridge. The last time we saw the final week of the fighting, everyone pulled out the last measure. The siege units were out. Tear gathering had increased. Rewards have been had had their costs deducted. Everything was going as planned to the climatic finale. And this week is the final update on the battle and its aftermath. As we can see, Zeradoman is no longer here. The cases of the tears are also empty, and troops are no longer coming out. We head on over to the battlefield. There are no nodes in which to gather any sort of tears. Come on here, Burning Ember. Ah! There you are. And even the crater in the center is completely void of anything. Even though it says like a vast maelstrom of energy, it's actually quite empty. The battle has ceased, and yet the crater remains. Because, like crap, the crater is going to vanish immediately like that. What the? I don't remember seeing all the... Oh, these are all arrows. Wait, why are there so many arrows from the Zamorak side? No, oh, well, whatever. Yes, even though we are Ceredominist, we can wander into the Zamorakian camp. Since there's no one here. Except the Quartermasters. The Quartermasters have remained behind in case you had any sort of renown you didn't spend. You can't get any more. But in case you did have any, they're there. I wonder if he'll actually say anything to me. I never checked. <laughs> Ignores me. <laughs> nah, I figured it's as much. So yes, everyone is gone. The choices that were made to Lumbridge, though, are have remained. Although, if we head on over near the Lodge Stone, you'll notice that there's someone missing. With the fighting over, Karamir has vanished. So it looks like she's gone off to do her own thing with the Godless. But as we can see, the guardsmen are still there, the dogs are still there. Every decision that was made is still in effect. And if we head on over to the center of the crater... As soon as I see him, there he is. We see a Ceredominist preacher right by the center. I forget if he actually was voiced. Glowing Ember, get over here. Quit being caught on stuff. Glowing Ember! I know you're a ball of fire, but I command you to come over here! Anyway, right by the crater is a Ceredominus Preacher, in full Ceredominus War Priest set as well. And in talking to him, you can s see what happened in the battle and watch the opening and final cutscene. Now, the final cutscene plays on its own when you log in when the battle ended. Obviously, since I've been playing this game since then, I, I have to go and replay through him and not just immediately show what happened. Now, I do apologize that it has been a little while. The battle actually ended about a week ago. So, really, this should have been up last week, but things come up, and I just couldn't get around to doing it until now. But thankfully, everything is still the same. So let's go ahead and talk to the preacher. Looks like he doesn't have a voice, so I'll just say what he says. Glory to Sarah Doman, the rightful victor of the Battle of Lumbridge. Uh, what happened here? You don't know? The Battle of Lumbridge was an epic battle fought between the noble god Ceredomen and the wicked pretender god Zamorak. 
Zamorak came through a portal in Lumbridge and immediately began destroying everything around him. But then, the mighty Ceridoman appeared and intervened, protecting us all. They locked blows and both bore their full might down upon each other. The force of their fury rent the ground beneath our feet asunder and created the crater we see today. Locked in a stalemate, each summoned their mighty armies and waged war across Lumbridge. They were locked in vicious battle for ten weeks before Ceridoman finally emerged victorious, leaving Zamorak broken and defeated. Uh, what's that armor you're wearing, even though I have the exact same set? This armor? Why, it is the armor of the dedicated warriors of Ceridoman. Brave followers of Ceridoman were given this armor when they had earned enough recognition with his army. During the battle, you could have claimed this from the Quartermaster, if you fought for Ceridoman. Other than that, it is only born by from... Born by from? That's weird. It is only born by devout Ceridominus warriors in the God Wars dungeon. So, even though the battle is over, you can still get the War Priest set if you head on over to the God Wars dungeon and kill certain followers of Ceridomen. And certain creatures will drop certain pieces of the armor. I don't know what monsters drop which pieces, and quite honestly, I don't care because I have the full set. I'm pretty sure you can find that up somewhere on either the RuneScape wiki or... Like, RuneScape's official wiki or even, like, the fan site RuneScape wiki. One of the two, I'm sure. The vile Zamorakian forces have similar though far more sinister, armor that can be taken from Zamorakian warriors in the God Wars dungeon. So the same thing applies to the Zamorakian war priest set. If you really wanted that, you can go and kill Zamorakian followers in the God Wars dungeon. Now we can replay the opening cuts here from here, but I think you guys want to see what the final cutscene was. So let's see what happened when the war or, not war, when the battle ends. And so, with that, Ceridoman has defeated Zamorak. Zamorak is down, but I'm sure it won't stay down forever. Now, when it came to the end of the battle, <laughs> the thing was, was that the Zamorakian forces never turned the tide. They didn't lessen Ceridoman's lead at all. Now, if I'm, I'm pretty sure I heard this on the forums from a J mod that in the very beginning, when RuneScape 3 came out and the battle started, initially, Sam Zamorak was in the lead, very briefly, like for the first hour or two. And then Ceridoman's followers came and just overwhelmed them with numbers. I think... A lot of players misinterpret, like, oh, Ceridoman 
has been so betrayed as like a god of good and Zamorak is a god of evil and people just went for good. Really, I don't buy that. Most people typically try to be on the more destructive side. So I really don't buy that at all. I mean, I'm sure there's some people who are like that. And there's some people who had the bandwagon effect. But I think people overplay that. Oh, there you are, Glowing Ember. I think people on the losing side just overplay that so much. I really do believe that people actually paid attention to the lore. And just went from there. They just chose which side they wanted to support more. Whether it was Sarah Doman, because they knew what Zamorak had done, or they chose Zamorak because they wanted to uh, make sure Sarah Doman didn't get more power. I really do believe that the player base is smarter than that. At least that's my hope. I mean, I'm sure there's some people who are like that, that what people are accusing. I'm more than certain that that's the case. But I think that's more, people did choose Sarah Doman for the right reason. I mean, heck, I chose Sarah Doman immediately just because, I mean, I've already talked this before, but so I'm not going to say the whole thing. But just the belief my character has as a Serenist and as a member of the Godless. And even I, I joined the Zamoraki inside because even though I am part of that um, following? I mean, I am kind of like a mercenary character, at least for this battle. So, yeah, I went and got the rewards for the war preset. Even if I didn't, I could go and go... I can go and go, yes. I can go to the God Wars dungeon and get it now, so that wouldn't have even been that great of a consequence anyway. Now, there is something that's going to be done a little bit with the battlefield uh, later this month. For a Halloween event, instead of the usual, like, something with the Grim Reaper's house or whatnot, instead of that, the Halloween event this year is going to be the reconstruction of Lumbridge. What will happen is that during a few weeks around Halloween, um, the camps, both of the Ceredominus and Zamorakian side, uh, will be taken down, and the supplies from that will be used to help rebuild the Lumbridge. The houses that were destroyed, the castle walls that fell down, things will be used to help build Lumbridge again. I will not be doing that since that's its own little separate event, and is not directly involved in the world events. It's more of an aftermath thing, so I think I'll go ahead and just skip doing that since that's not directly affecting the gods and the battlefield. Oh wow, there's actually... I didn't even notice that before. There's lots of graves right by the Ceredominus camp. Huh. Well, that's interesting. So yes, I won't show the reconstruction of Lumbridge in case you were wondering about that. So, next time on RuneScape 3, we'll see what happens when the second world event occurs. We don't know who's involved yet, or where it will be. If I would have a guess, my money is on Falador. That is where I believe the second event will take place. As to who will be involved... I've seen a lot of speculation on the forms. I think the one I've seen most often is Armadale versus Bandos. And I wouldn't be opposed to such a, a battle. But nothing has been confirmed as of yet. That is just pure speculation. The Falder part, the gods. We'll find out more when we get there. So, until next time, everyone. Take care.